Exactly, shit, and I, I gotta say, um, that, that Ring City card, that was the first time I saw a Ring City production, and mm. I low-key fucked with it. It had, like, a a hardcore, to, you know, USA Tuesday night vibe to it, but, but on some back alley Street Fighter loading screen type shit, like... Yeah, no, absolutely, bro. <laughs> And, you know, shout out to Freddie Rose. You know, they kept um, honoring him and they had all. You yeah, know, she had the, when she was Riker. I was like, damn, she aged. Like, she looks like somebody's grandma. You yeah, know? yeah. I almost didn't even recognize Riker. I was like, the fuck? Yeah, like, yeah. So she used to look like a straight up killer. Like, uh, every picture, yeah. like, I mean, I still never forgive her what she did a million dollar baby, though. I was, <laughs> I was like, I was like, wait, 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 why'd she do that for? Why'd she, why'd she have to do that? Like, it's crazy. We need another female boxing movie right now. Like, yeah, between that or you know that and girl fight, you know those are classics. You know, and yeah, you know. Yeah, but let, let me not get off talking. But yeah, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was good seeing we'll see a Riker and yeah, Ring City. Yeah, I mean, definitely reminded me of like the old, it was, you know, like Tuesday Night Fights or a fucking KO Nation or some shit like that, nigga. So it was just like, well, without the without the DJs and shit. Although I think there was a DJ. You know, but it, it's just, it, but it's like grimy though, because like it's outside yeah. of wildcard. Like I said, I've been the wildcard, so knowing what's actually bad, like you can hear the trucks and shit like behind. Yeah, it. You see gas stations and parking lots in the background. Yeah. It got like a fucking street rage, you know. Yeah, like level. Niggas, you know, you about to fight the boss from under the bridge. Yeah, like and niggas are coming up from the top, uh, from the top, uh, the top uh, floor of the of the gym, coming down the stairs and some shit like that. So. Yeah. It, Oh, Rough Riders video shoot or some shit. <laughs> I'm saying Def Jam, you know, Def Jam fucking video game nigga. Fight for yeah, life. fucking old Def Jam Vendetta ass. Yeah. <laughs> Boxing card. You know, but it, it was dope though. And Charles Conway, who was the main event against um, Matty, uh, uh, I'm about to, let's see if I can pronounce this guy's name. Uh, last name again. Ash Kayef, there we go. You know, and uh, now Charles Conwell is a prospect. We said before that 154 prospect, you know, dude is a talent, and he looked absolutely ridiculous. He looked spectacular that night. Like, dude was, dude looked complete. You know, you, and you say that, why? Wow, he only has 14 fights. Dude looked like, I mean, against another undefeated prospect, like, dude looked like the total goods. You know, and Askev, though, this motherfucker, like, he immediately, because he knew he was out, he was out class, but dude tried to get that. He, he tried to be dirty as fuck. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, he was leading with his elbow, you know. Was, yeah, he was, yeah, like, he was, you know, he it's, was. It's like, we talked about, like, you know, when you're trying to get these advantages in the ring, you know, you try to win. That's why people say you can't play boxing. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers are beat your biceps off and. Elbow you head lead with they head all types of shit because because no one wants that L. Yeah, you know like Conwell like he went to the body he kept the constant pressure on Askev you know you know Askev you know, he tried to lead with his fucking head you know Conwell was trying to time him with some uppercuts like and it was you know it was it, it, it was a slow steady beating Askev he tried like like he tried to be dirty and it wasn't working and he was just catching the hole. I mean he tried to box and fight at first but that didn't work. Try to be dirty, that shit ain't work. Like Conwell just took him to school. Like yeah, it was a good performance. Like one of his best performances for me. Like yeah, no, I, I was really impressed. You know, definitely shout out to him. Like you know, and then he capped off the card too because the card was good as far as action. And I think yeah. he had a female boxing match on that one on that card that was good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and and then that's what they need to keep doing. You know. Like, cause you're almost guaranteed a good fight with these women's boxing matches. Like, right? I think I think they know the deal now. And like, even more importantly, like you know, like shows like Ring City, like they provide an outlet, you know, and that's not pro- that's not political or promotional for fighters. Cause yeah. you know, Ring City, works they were doing profiles on the fighters and shit, and I was appreciating that. Like that shit was on point. Like exactly. But yeah, I definitely was fucking with the production, but McConwell, um. 
I see big things for the kid. Um, I like his technique, his, his style. He's going to be difficult because he jabs and gets up on you. Mm-hmm. And he could beat you mid range and, and on the inside. And um, and he moves his head and he parries shots. Like he could be on the outside and still, you know, be effective. And, and yes, sir. You know, he's just a he's just a problem. Um, yeah. Shout right. out to Lukey Box. And I, I know last time we said um, I was saying I, I want to see Con Conwell and then Fondora. I, I feel like that's the fight right there, man. Yeah. And also, I also want to shout out his trainer, Roshan Jones. Yeah. And that's the dude right there. Like he's the he's the architect behind that. You know that style that Conwell uses, man. Yeah. Matter of fact, shit, we forgot the damn put this shit live. This shit should have been live. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh no, nah, because the reason why I figured because I was like, damn, the last one was live, so. Yeah, that's true, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we tag the appropriate people. Yeah, know? yeah, that's true. You know, and, you know when we when we, when we release this, so. But no, yeah, it was, you know, it was, a, it was a, you know, it was a good, it was a good card, it was a very good card, and I, and I hope, you know, that you know this gets the support. Like, I mean, I don't know. The only thing I don't know is what the ratings are for this. You know. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. But that's the thing, NBC has always done like a solid job with boxing. It's just. I feel like some people just they stargaze with the sport. They just only care about the big names and that's cool and all, but sometimes you'll get better matchmaking on this level. Right. And you'll be stuck with a Saunders Martin Murray ass fight with these fucking big names. And <laughs> and that should get old. So yeah. if everybody match up better throughout the sport you wouldn't be starving for just anything how, how they try to do niggas like yeah like okay I, I, i'll take canelo versus yildrum like no no yeah no. i want i want golovkin versus the delivery guy like no no, <laughs> no god damn it <laughs> you know what i mean like, I, don't, I don't want that in these fucking for, yeah i want andre versus the fucking um swap shop attendant like <laughs> yeah, I, I you know, I want him to fight the guy that's at the damn um, swap meet. You um, know, let me see. I, I need to see Mungia with another jobber. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, match these guys up, man. Yeah, you know. And so, yeah, Ring City, man, we support y'all. Like, you know, definitely, obviously, we'll definitely catch more shows, and you know, in the future. And uh, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing, man. That's. You know, I know Ring City. Like, I know the Ring City people. They actually follow us too. The good people. So yeah, I mean, this this boxing at its hardcore root. I mm-hmm. feel like we got like this was a great weekend of boxing. We got three different levels of cards. Mm-hmm. The, honestly, just the Canelo card was the one that was top heavy and and, and really the most anticlimactic. You know. Yeah. Because the card was boring, and then the main event was supposed to be excellent, and we got you know mid. Yeah, that's not Canelo' fault, but you know Smith didn't hold up his side of the bargain, you know. Right. So. And Zermeda tried, but I mean, you know, it wasn't enough. Damn, it was wasn't a fraction of enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, the Ring City was probably the most solid all-around card from top to bottom. Right. So. You know, that's what I'm saying. If you're a real boxing fan, you're going to see, you're going to fuck with everything. You're not just going to, well, let me see when Floyd going to fight a YouTube dude and mm. uh, when Canelo going to fight this guy or Joshua, this guy. Now, you, you, you'll try to watch everything. So Exactly. Uh, I you fuck with this. Know that at least. Like I said, you know, like I said, because honestly, we're in an age right now where there's probably more boxing on on TV now than any given time. Like, me and LB and P, you know, we've watched this shit for like years. Like, you know, we, we like we remember when it's just really HBO and Showtime and ESPN with an occasional occasional songs on maybe Fox on like real one Both TV or ABC <laughs> or CBS. Yeah, uh, yeah, NBC. Yeah, you know, it's like I mean, and, and and definitely, you know, obviously it's not accessible. Like there was no internet, there was no TV. You know, uh, boxing on the internet, it's not in the, not in the 56k yeah. unless you did, unless you watch it through real play or some shit like that. And that's a whole yeah. nother. We could do a whole uh, podcast oh, at yeah, another time. Right, this nigga say real player. Yeah, you know, that, that, that I'm an OG in this shit, bro. So some of us weren't. I don't even think some of us were alive for that. <laughs> I remember listening to them going to the hip hop sites on Friday when the new music came out and. 
loading up the real audio player. <laughs> yeah, I used to download them shits and convert them into MP3s to some low bit MP3s, bro. Yeah. yeah, I used to. I was like, because they were so small. I was like, because because they were so they they actually download recently fast. Like they only take me like maybe seven minutes to do, which <laughs> which was fast back then <laughs> for a fucking song. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it was like you know, it's like you know, like if you want to see boxing grow, you, you know, you gotta be able to. It needs all the support that you can. Like you know, in Ring City, it's like it's not political. So everyone that if you're a boxing fan, watch the damn shows. Like you know, you don't yeah. you don't have to, you don't have to get some stand shit. Oh, well, PBC is best, or oh, no, Top Rank's best. Oh, hold on, who, who's the A side? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, like they they, they oh, need so and so getting enough money for this. Um, um, uh, um. yeah. They can do some whole shit. Like, who cares? They can just watch a fight. I'm but sorry. when I see two guys fighting randomly on World Star, I'm not thinking about. Hmm. I wonder how much that one guy makes. <laughs> 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 like, like, you, yeah, like, you, you niggas sound like, like idiots with that shit. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless, I said before, unless you, unless you're on this niggas team and or a promotion, and you're getting an actual paycheck that you can get a W two for. At the end of the year, yeah, you should even be concerning yourself with that stupid shit. I mean, that's the that's the hip hop shit. Like, oh well, how much how many albums did you sell? Fuck your records. Fuck fuck what fuck what you sound like. How 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 the how much records you sold? Like, corny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, 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 randomly it just reminded me of some random shit because I was on Instagram uh, earlier in the week, and I just happened to be on the Instagram of Mauricio Herrera because I saw something about because he. He does like he has some he has an arcade business that he creates like art random custom arcades and shit, and you know, and Herrera was you know there was some shit about Danny Garcia, and niggas was talking shit to them, and Herrera was like talking shit to them back like he was, you know, and he was like and he had these regular ass niggas talking about, well I got more money than you and all types of shit like that. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it was like it's like it's like it's so fucking stupid to tell a professional boxer, especially a boxer you don't really know how much he actually made. And Herrera yeah. made scratch, you know, but you know, you don't. I, I'm pretty. Yeah, sure. I, would, I would definitely say I would. I would believe Herrera has made decent money in boxing. Where, when I say decent, meaning he can invest that into something, buy some nice homes, live a comfortable life, and still have his facilities intact. In, in, in tech. Yeah, and he and look, Herrera's not struggling, but it's just it must remind me like a fan actually I'd have to tell him because because Herrera was you know. Was kind, of, was kind of like, you know, was getting him back, you know, he was talking that shit to him back, you know, so he was like, it was just, he really went to the money shit, because he knew he probably wouldn't be, he couldn't beat Herrera in a fight or some shit like that, so, and it was like, it, it was like stupid, like, you know, you shouldn't consider yourself with what a fighter makes. But I'm not even, why would you even go to that insult when it's like, if I seen a guy on HBO, Showtime, ESPN multiple times, I'm thinking he didn't have some money and opportunities, I ain't even yeah, gonna I'm like, hey, like, you know what I'm saying, like, He's had main events like he, he's 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 made checks that that like you know I'm pretty sure ninety percent of the of the human population have not have never seen so. It was yeah. like, like, dude was dude was mouthing off like I guess he, he thought that nigga was like what 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 Tank Williams or what what's that what's that nigga um what's that guy Superman fought <laughs> oh man. um. Uh, Thomas Wayne, top, top Dog Williams. Top Dog Williams, yeah, yeah. Like, that's how, like, he, like, dude. Like, and I ain't even trying to be disrespectful to dude because he, you know, he's a solid fighter. He had a good fight with Superman, but yeah. I just remember, I think, he, was he the one who made the post with the, uh, he had posted, like, 30 grand and was bragging about that shit? Yeah, he, yeah, he did that stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even then, it's like, you're looking at him getting there that all at one time. Yeah. So, the, average, the average employee ain't seeing thirty grand in one day type shit. Let's do some fucking stripper thought. Yeah, and, or or you know what's good in the stock market and shit. So yeah, or, or, you know, nigga flew you out and hold you out or some shit. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, nigga, I give you thirty grand. Take yeah. your whole ass off. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, ring city man. Like keep doing what you're doing. We'll, we'll continue to support, man. You know, and uh, our final one for the night is actually a preview. You know, and the funny thing we'll, is, we'll make it quick, like like how yeah. they tried to make his career quick. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, because funny too is like before COVID hit, we did a podcast on James Kirkland because James Kirkland was on the on, on the verge of making his P- PBC debut, and you know it was significant because you know 
James Cook obviously has been uh, has had a hell of an up and down career, a hell of a career, like a career that was like I mean, to, man, it, it's like it's unexplainable. Like, I mean, haven't always been the, the 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 fairest of careers. Hell no, like, and he's had to ruin some careers in, as a result, including his own. You know, yeah, like honestly, like. Kirkland, they need to make a movie with. They need to make a boxing movie for Kirkland. Yeah, no, so it's like, dude. I mean, dude came out. I mean, he was a prospect. He came out in the early two thousands, and dude was a beast. And then he went to prison, you know, because he, he got. I mean, he got into some shit, and he got out, and he resumed. You know, he resumed what he was doing. And, and then they tried to fast track him. That kind of failed. Yeah, well, I mean, anyway, it did. I mean, I mean, I mean, he was knocking out the likes of Vera and Joel Julio, shit like that, you know. And then he had that wild ass fight with Alan Conyers, you know, back in the day. Like, dude, Hold dude on, but I was before he went into prison, I thought we were no, talking no, about no, 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 those fights are after the prison. Oh yeah, yeah, because I'm thinking about when he. Uh, uh... Damn, how many times he went to prison? Because I thought he he got out and lost a sheet of two at one point. I don't know. I mean, I know he, he was out for at least like three years or some shit. Like yeah, because remember he came back and he was fighting, and they had this dude fighting every th- three weeks. Oh yeah, he did get arrested. Yeah, because yeah, two thousand three. Yeah, because that's because I remember seeing him like in the early his early early years. Yeah, because he went to he went to jail for armed robbery, and he got and he was out of boxing for two and a half years. Then he went to prison in two thousand nine. Yeah. yeah, but he got a really he got released after like maybe one and a half years of September. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, so so the, we was mi- remixing all them. <laughs> yeah, no, but either way, like, you, you was talking about the early part of career, like the first prison stint. I was talking about the second one. So uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, Kirkland, in, even after all that, like, dude, you know, dude was uh, he he, he start he started beast like he started, you know, really putting some foot to ass to some of one fifty fours like fighters. You know, Angulo. and Angulo. Yeah, the unfortunate one, obviously, you know, you, LB mentioned the Ishida fight. No one saw that shit coming. Nobody. Yeah. Absolutely no one saw that bullshit coming. You know, and that was, that was some more fun. unexpected than a, a uppercut Povetkin uh, landed on Dylan White. Yeah, and I think, too, because, like, and, and the funny thing is, that was like his third fight in, like, in, le- in, in like, less than, like, less than two months. <laughs> no, less than a month. Yeah, it's like not even two months, it was a month. That was his third fight in a month. It was like three weeks. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you know, and that was fucked up. And then the Angulo fight, you know, that shit was every. If you ever see, if you've never seen the Angulo fight, Kirk Kirkland, you need to watch. It has one of the best opening rounds you'll ever see in fight in boxing. You know, yeah. you know, like and for Angulo is a tough guy to put down. And and go and yeah, and go nearly got taken out after dropping Kirkland, and then after that it was just a slow, steady beat down. You know, and Kirkland. You know, and this is you know this is where you saw the fruit of the whole his relationship with Ann Wolf. Shout out to her for for being inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, over Miguel Cotto. So, um, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so yeah, you know, and, and, it, and it was good. Like it, Angulo was his hype. It was, it was that was some quality hate, by the way. Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, like. <laughs> Yeah, and it, and it was, and, and you know, he was on his high point. And then, of course, the the Molina fight, you know, which you know the, he was losing that fight, and an, unfor- an unfortunate disqualification from a cornerman who didn't understand what the hell, you know, what it means to not enter the ring before the round ends. Entered the fucking ring, you know, and pretty much save uh, Kirkland from a from a loss. But his momentum was like, I think his his initial momentum was probably done. Um, yeah. Then you know, then you then then the Tapia fight. Now Tapia was the prospect. You know, Tapia was HBO was was, was gonna put was put was about to put. Yeah, like, they brought yeah. Kirkland was supposed to be a name guy that he lost to basically yeah. the stepping yeah. stone. And instead, you know, Kirkland administers part of the stepped, worst stepped off his foot in his ass. Yeah, the worst beatdowns you'll ever see. And, 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 and it was back and forth too. But after that, it started off back and forth. But I think by the third round, yeah. He got. It was like the. You ever see? Y'all ever seen the movies? The the Blob. Yeah. <laughs> and that should just keep coming, like, yeah. and it just, you know, you know, just envelopes you. Just that's what that shit happened. Yeah, like, and honestly, real talk. I mean, a actual podcast could actually be done on how fucked up this fight was, like the consequences. 
you know, but whatever it was. Might be a forgotten fade. It's been long enough. Yeah, you know, but whatever it was, like, Tapia was undefeated and you know, he was on the verge of getting, like, a big HBO contract, and Kirkland beat everything out of him. Everything that was Tapia at that point, and Tapia was a real prospect. He was finished. Yeah, the power, everything, like, you know. Yeah, he won a bloody Decent war. hand speed, and, and Kirkland and Ann Wolf, they took him apart. Uh, Kirkland... Yeah. He landed, I think, copy box records for the uh, most punches, most power punches in a um, junior middleweight belt. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, it, it was bad. That's the type of ass whooping, like, jeez, yeah. like you, you made me have to rewatch this shit. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, hell, I've even posted it on the Instagram before. Like everyone, like, everyone who's actually watched the fight, no, like, it, like it's probably one of the most known fights of someone getting ruined, like badly. Yeah. Anytime I hear about a fighter getting ruined or, or I need an example, like Kirkland's Glenn Tapia is always like the first one. Like, yeah, yep. I know people like to use Trinidad Vargas, but I don't look at it. That Hell way. no, no, you, you can't. That's say not you a ruin. ruin. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah, no, Tapia, yeah, no, Tapia, I mean, Tapia had to go to the trauma unit that night. Like he 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 he, he got a being that if it hadn't lasted any longer, it probably would have killed him. In the ring, like and that's not even cap or anything. You know? <laughs> so it's like, like he was that close to dying. Yeah. So, but that was the last great version of uh, James Kirkland we've seen. And yeah, and then unfortunately he fell out with Ann Wolf again. Again, yeah. And, and then he got blessed with a fight with Canelo, which we all saying like, and Ann, Ann Wolf trained uh, Ann Wolf trained Kirkland would have. There was a forty percent chance he probably would have knocked out Canelo. Like, it, it at least had a better chance than what happened. So yeah, but there was know, no- that was more. That was more. You know, cherry picking stat pattern for Canelo. You know, that was old Canelo. You know, I, I don't want to dwell on that. I rather keep it positive. You know, after the the new good victory he just had. Right, but it, it was sad to me because Kirkland, like this Kirkland, like he wasn't trained the way he usually was, and he got took apart, like. You know, it, it, I, and I shook my head because I, I think everyone should, and Anne was actually there in the crowd watching that fight. Yeah, and she so, called it. I think she was saying like he's gonna get knocked out, or whatever. Right. Yeah, and then and, but then too, like he got paid in that fight, and then, so he was out of boxing for like four years. Like he was just doing whatever, and then he, he then he started making a comeback in 2019 on like local cards or whatever. So now in a, and obviously you know, he was supposed to make it earlier this year before covid killed his event so now in december the day after christmas you know he he main events a card on fox regular fox people so this is boxing's final christmas grief yeah this is pbc's final card for the year and everything like that and uh you know, yeah, and obviously like, he's the most known person on this card. It's a triple header. He's obviously clearly the most known person on this card. You know, and he's facing uh, Juan Maciel Montiel, who is twenty-one, four and two with twenty-one knockouts. So he's a puncher. <laughs> so, you know, but uh, if you look, this is the thing: if if you can punch and you go at James Kirkland, you better try to put him away then. Yeah, because if you get let this man start clicking it's yeah it, it might not end well yeah you know it's straight up curtains it'll be a wrap but another thing that works against it because kirkland is also 36 now it's amazing too like they're 36 years old so we don't like at this point i, I don't know why i thought he was older i don't know i thought he was younger <laughs> <laughs> i mean let's say I mean, he's been around since 2001 like he that's a so like yeah. He's been around for a hot minute, but it's also too like he's had so many inactive spaces in his in his you know, during his career, like you know. Yeah, that's the thing you don't feel like you aged with him. Like he's always in and out, like like a damn like a bad parent just in and out your life, and yeah. <laughs> you don't see him age. You just see him come back and forth. So it's like oh damn, like damn, my mom is like old now, like I'm yeah. damn old now. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, and of course he's not, and, and he still has to be with Aaron Wolf. So, so it's like, you know, it, it, it's. I mean, I mean, I, I know like PBC is gonna give him a chance though. But one thing I'd hate to see this happen is if he gets turned into like a jobber to the stars. Like, you know, they're like, okay, because I mean, honestly, Kirkland could be. He could probably fight at middleweight. You know, I think that I think this is a middleweight fight. If I'm not mistaken. I mean, I see they might be trying to just make an opponent for Charlo, but. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, let's just say, it's uh, like, look, man, PBC, y'all gotta just start working with other people and just make these fights. Like, cause y'all, for some reason, PBC is not that good at building up opponents for 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 their marquee guys. Like, sometimes they could do it on certain divisions, but for the most part, they kind of slip up at it. And they be having mad loaded divisions, man. But and then, but the division where this is like really prevent, obviously, is one sixty. PBC middleweights are not. PBC does not. Their middleweights are not where they need to be. Like at best, some of them are like B level, like middleweights. They're not. And that's why they just got to start making these cross promotion fights because all these retreads and shit. It, it, it just ain't. No one's really moving anything over there. Right, and Kirkland and Kirkland has a name. So I like to say I would really hate for him just to be a name fighter. But but see that you see how they fucked up with Devin Alexander. They can't fuck it up with Kirkland. Yeah. Meaning if he actually beat guys, you gotta give him the decision. You know, not saying give him preferential treatment, but mm-hmm. you're trying to build to something bigger. You know, you gotta keep it in line. You gotta guide it correctly, you know. Yeah. And y'all weren't doing that with Devin Alexander and, and y'all missed that on a, a, a future opponent for like a marquee guy. Y'all could have used that as the guy to send the Crawford. Exactly. And it would have looked respectable, but y'all fucked that up. Now what y'all got? You guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Porter, but we, we don't know when that's happening. So 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 yeah, um, I'm not even going to have no prediction for this. It's just, I guess, you know, I just want to see a good fight, good card. Um, yeah. hopefully, hopefully Kirkland could return and um, yeah, like, like I said, it's after Christmas. Like, let's put it this way: like after watching do big shit. Yeah, after watching basketball and I think there's a football game too on on Christmas. You know, you 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 want to see some hands flying at least, you know, no matter the quality of the card. So we're, we're gonna. So yeah, you know, hopefully that you know it's at least because they don't always have to be big names. It's just the matchmaking got to be good. I need to start seeing eleven and one versus twelve and zero, oh, or you know 10, right. 10 and two versus eleven and one type. I I need to see like niggas with winning records on both sides. Facts. And this technically, this card does have all all the there's three fights. They have all you know all all six fighters have winning records. You know, they just don't have the name value like Kirkland does. Kirkland. Is- yeah. So I mean, this might be an accidental good card from PBC, which which is cool because I know it might not be too many people trying to fight on you know the day after Christmas. So mm-hmm. I get it, but you know, hopefully everybody is you know throwing hands like you know like they, they unboxing gifts or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> facts. <laughs> and we get a a good final night of boxing for the year and unless japan got some card coming up on the new year's day or some shit or new year's eve they probably do we're just waiting for like the big announcement yeah you know but yeah so yeah i mean i think that i think enough on that card you know that's our that's our show for tonight you know you know we went through a whole bunch of you know pre you know went through recaps and previews so yeah you know, it, it, like overall 2020, at least it did make a good recovery on its year. You know, and honestly, we'll definitely, you know, we'll definitely have a podcast for end of year stuff. You know, like, you know, probably maybe the first weekend of the new year or stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, definitely look out for that. You know, and half uh, a pound list is going to get updated. Um, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. The, the award shows and, you know, you know how Ring Game do the award shows. It's going to be, what, uh, that's our third one? Yeah, it's going to be our third one, yep. 18, 19, yeah, 20. Yeah, this will be the third. Yeah, so, you know, third time's a charm. Um, yes, sir. Who, who knows? It might, you know, the, the third time be doing it. So, we yeah. might have some classic shit on. But y- y'all know the type of awards we do on. Best promoter, you know, best knockout, you know, fighter of the year, fighter of card the year. of the year, comeback of the year, yeah, robbery of the year, <laughs> of the year. You, you know, no one does the award shows like we do, you know, yes, sir. we hit every category, you know, jobber of the year, you know, some of these names like the Dog Bay Award of the year, <laughs> aka have a great year and lose at the end. 
<laughs> yes, that's an award in Ring Gang. Um, yeah, we're going to do... Clay Collar won that award. I'm, that's spoiler alert. <laughs> so so he won that award this year. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's just a little taste of, you know, what we got in the store for y'all. Word. So, yeah, so yeah, definitely, you know, before we get up out of here, you know, give our final thoughts. Uh... P, do you want to give your final thoughts? Yeah, of course. You know, it was a good, good three day, three you know days of boxing or two days of boxing. All three three cards were dope, and we didn't even touch on the Showtime card, which was was cool for what it was. Yeah. You know, yeah. Unfortunately, when you have two fights end in like a no contest and end on technical decisions, and then the other one was a robbery. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I know. So I. That definitely was. I had smoke for that, so fuck them. But you know, yeah. those judges suck. You know, unfortunately. Yeah, you know fuck, you. fuck those judges that I don't even know who this nigga talking about. But if, if y'all rob somebody, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. Sick of that shit. Yeah. We we don't we don't rob niggas at ring gang. So fuck with us. Yeah. That's another reason to fuck with us. We're not gonna jip your favorite fighters over. Hey. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll give the pro- we'll give them props. You know. We, we deserve to have an alpha pound number one boxer that'll take on tough challenges and dominate them. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's almost over, so I'm, you know, the year's almost over, and now I'm looking forward to 2021, and hopefully there's some big, big fights on the way, but let's get through 2020 first, you know what I'm saying? But almost, almost there. So, in the meantime, you already know where to check us out at, ringgangradio.com. Check us out on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. You know the vibes. Yes, sir. Ayo, Rome, do you have any final thoughts? No, not really. That nigga said everything I needed to say. You already know what the vibes. Bring gang, nigga. <laughs> Yo, K- Callum Smith, nigga. Yo, I need to eat something, nigga. Go up a weight class and get some power behind them punches, nigga, because your ass looking soft, I'll tell you. <laughs> you a champ act like a champ nigga train like a champ yeah you, you like to say because you know me and Rome were like the same height or whatever so I know like so he's very he was disgusted yeah. but he told him so I couldn't believe yeah, it I thought he was silent I thought he on this it. One. <laughs> when I seen the size I was like oh okay this is gonna be a this is gonna be a body this is gonna be a good one this nigga gotta walk down the whole time fuck that <laughs> I swear, every every big nigga felt like like Thanos lost this weekend or some shit. <laughs> yeah, this 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 felt like to big niggas. This felt like you know, like Spud Webb dunking on the fucking six foot five nigga. <laughs> <laughs> It reminds me of a wild shit that I saw years ago with Spud Webb when this nigga actually, you know, I think he won a jump ball with fucking Minute Ball. Like, I, it, oh it was, lord. <laughs> And there was an actual post, like it was there's an actual picture of this, and I was just like, wow! I was like, I was like, damn, Spud had some ups. Jeez, only <laughs> a tall motherfucker would remember that. Yeah, and, and that's what I was because only the short dude will remember it because he's the one who did it. Nobody else would even like get <laughs> yeah. it like that. The yeah. tall nigga remember that shit, like. Like, I know the tall nigga that got dunked on by Vince Carter in the Olympics. I know he remembers that shit every day. Yeah, that shit it, it killed his fucking career. Like, the Knicks, remember, the Knicks drafted his ass. And the Knicks was like, eh, well, sorry, you know. No. Yeah, um, well, yeah, you posters in my kid's bedroom, um, Yeah, you didn't You didn't just get dunked on, you got dunked over, so. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you didn't even contest that shit. Like, you didn't, not even try to draw a foul. You didn't even flop. We can't, we can't have no. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those, what good are you? <laughs> yeah, it's like, you just have to, you to just, all you gotta do is just duck your head slightly. Nah, bro, you better, you better power bomb that nigga out the air. Shit. <laughs> the term big for no reason ass nigga was coined. <laughs> Little known black history fact. <laughs> Oh man, yo, shoot, that, that shit was crazy. But uh, yo, LB, man, do you have any final thoughts? Oh man, yo, shout outs to the gang, Ring Gang, the whole squad, Clan Arky, Sample Genius. We dropping that album um sometime early next year. Um, shout outs to Key Soprano. We gonna try to get him back in here next week. Hopefully, yes. um, got a little project in the works with him as well. Um, 
you know, big shit popping. Shout outs to uh, RTDZ, um, another damn 6'4 big dude of the crew. Um, yes, sir. Uh, prolific genius, you know, <laughs> shout outs to him. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the whole UK this squad. Love six footers, yo. This is the Pat Love six footers. <laughs> <laughs> whole, whole squad of ring game is fucking giants. Well, y'all go see it illustrated in the cartoon, you know. So that, that's coming up. Um, shout out to PJ, um, another tall motherfucker. Yeah, you know. Oh, you, you, you know. Um, so shout out to everybody in the squad. Fuck with us. Um, make sure you follow the Twitter, IG, all that shit. Got the new banner up. We gonna be taking over the game with the animation. Uh, got the pictures. Everybody set up. Um. You know the whole squad. You know Pat. You know Big Rome, King P. Everybody. Um, we about to take this shit over. So make sure y'all stay locked in with us, man. There's more shit on the way. But that that, that cartoon is about probably the next big shit that we got cooking for y'all. So be on the lookout. Make sure you follow in the squad so you'll know when it drops. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, there's nothing more I can add than, than what the brothers already mentioned already. You know, but yeah, definitely, you know, we, we, we definitely see you paying attention, like, you know, definitely on our Twitter, you know, we love the engagement. Like, you know, thank you for the, you know, for, you know, engaging with us and on YouTube, you know, we, you know, we can, you know, make some headway into there. You know, Anchor fans, shout out and Podomatic. My bad, I just put that out, you know. So. Yeah, got a lot of the streaming, you know, Spotify, everybody. You know. Yep, and then Anchor too, especially you know, like showing us all that type of love in there, man. So you know, we definitely appreciate it, and then we promise that we'll, we'll continue to continue our usual like high quality shit and even improve on it in twenty twenty one. That's our that's our vow and our promise. That definitely more the bars and boxing coming soon. Come coming back. Um, uh, you, you know, Pat been holding that shit down with the prediction, so you know, mm-hmm. we don't leave, we never leave y'all niggas hanging. Shout out to the UK fans. Uh, I know Caleb Smith disappointed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the tall lie, niggas nigga. still angry. Yo ass, yo ass been killing them predictions, nigga. Yo, yo flow jumped tremendously, nigga. Yo, yo ass spitting now, niggas. Oh, appreciate that. <laughs> well, I see, you know, you know, when I get when I when I get that from these two, you know, I get it, it, it means something. <laughs> I don't know. We we have to find the spot on them on the album. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you know, you, you never we know. got a nice little trap record for you. <laughs> you, know, you know, I mean, hell, I mean, even PJ spat a line, you know, on one of my shits, a couple lines yeah, for the fight architect. You know what I mean, so yeah, you know, and P, you know, P, you, you know, twenty twenty one. I know, you, I know, you want to get down, so you know. Get down, bro. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we we gonna need that posse cut. I don't know. That that might be an executive order. Yeah, everybody <laughs> gonna drop some bars. Yeah, we, we clan Arky come through with the uh, with, with the outro. <laughs> <laughs> you know that or pro. You know, you know. Some, yeah. You know, you know, some either way, someone has to be calling somebody a dosser on the outro, bro, from the UK. Yeah, hey, fucking dosser. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I could try something, but you 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 might get some fucking immortal technique poet off Mars type of shit. But... <laughs> I fuck with it. I fuck with it. Oh man, damn. So yeah, we'll, I don't know. We, we might, yeah, we'll, might have to drop that bars and boxing album. Yeah, at Ringing, we're a hub of creativity. So like, you just never know what we might come up with in 2021. Just, just to add on, you know, because we always like to add on to the cipher and keep it going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no one does that shit. Like, and they're like, we killing the poll game too. So y'all make sure y'all fucking with that Twitter. Yes. You know. So yeah, we here, man. Ringing's here to stay, man. You know, so yeah, so for myself, Pat Scorpio, the Ringo representer, for LB, Shadow Wolf the God, the GOAT artist, for King P, Bodega P, for Rome, Chicago win. Nigga, you better stop doing that bullshit. <laughs> this has been another episode of Real Talk, where as always, it's good we talk about it. So, till next time, peace. peace.